Welcome to this tutorial video about the web application called Distributed Spatial Multi-Criteria Evaluation. With this web application you can use online maps to choose locations. For instance, where you would want to live or start a business. It has been developed by staff of ITC, which is the Faculty of Geoinformation Science and Earth Observation of the University of Twente, and Open Spatial Decisions, both based in the Netherlands. Our earlier prototype that investigated and tested different technologies has now matured to a product, version 0.9.1. Look at our demonstration videos to see more elaborate examples. Replicate what we show you, experiment and send us your observations and comments. Share with your colleagues of course and friends and drop us a line if you are interested in implementing it in your organization. We will show you the decision problem, how to start the application, how to look at the spatial data, how to structure your decision problem and how to look at the results. This is an aerial photograph of the town of Enschede in the Netherlands. Let's assume that you have found a job in our lovely town, but currently you're living in another town or country and so you would want to move and you're looking for a place to live. You would want to bring a family with young children. So you might want to live in a neighborhood that is nice for children and a safe place. You would want good access to services and why not a wealthy neighborhood. So what does it mean? You probably would want to live in a place with many other children and maybe with playgrounds. And how about access to supermarkets or banking services? And maybe you would be interested in some crime and traffic accident statistics and a neighborhood with a nice average income. For this tutorial, we have downloaded several of such statistics from a public web service of our municipality. It is called the Neighborhood Monitor. We have offered it again as a web service using the open standards of the Open Geospatial Consortium. But now we don't go into the technical details. You can start the application from any web browser. Use this web address. If necessary, look at our Open Spatial Decisions website for a new address. On this screen you can see four panels. To the left you see the data panel to connect to and see online maps. In the middle the multi-criteria evaluation panel to make a tree of objectives, criteria and indicators. To the right you get the spatial view, to view input and output maps. And below it you have the spatial information panel to see data about a specific location once you have created an output map. We first turn to the data panel, but feel free to start with the criteria tree structuring. It is always a bit of a chicken and egg problem whether to first look at data and then consider your decision problem or the other way around. Anyway. In the data panel you can connect to data offered online by what are called web feature services. Of course you could try your own data service, but here we provide example data on our local server. You enter the address of this service and click on get data info. From the service you will receive spatial service identification information and a list of map layers. Each of these map layers carries information about the layer which you can access by clicking the information button. We are interested in the data layer about neighborhoods of Enschede. Let's remove this pop-up and click on a link of a map layer and receive a listing of the indicators available in that map layer. An indicator link will open a pop-up window in which you can retrieve the data with the download indicator map button. The web application now loads spatial data and calculates descriptive statistics. With this pop-up window you can assess whether it is worthwhile to use the indicator. For instance, if the average age is the same in all neighborhoods, the indicator age is not useful to distinguish between neighborhoods. I have closed the pop-up window. 
You can now also drag and drop an icon of the indicator map onto the spatial view so that you can see where different neighborhoods are. You can zoom in and you can use the slider bar to increase transparency. We have built in these steps of data exploration to avoid automatic loading of useless indicators, which could be demanding on bandwidth of internet networks. But if you know the data, you can download them, as we will show later, straight into the criteria tree. Now you could browse the indicators. As you can see, I have loaded the indicators that I think could be of interest to our decision, such as the average age, percentage of high income households, the distance to banks, schools, markets and playgrounds, but also social problems reported to the police and traffic accident reports. Next we turn to the spatial multi-criteria evaluation pane. Let us formulate our overall goal, objectives, criteria and indicators. Our goal was to find a good neighborhood to live in, so we type we want to find a good neighborhood to live in. One of our objectives was to find a neighborhood nice for children. So we add an objective and we type we want a place nice for children. But how do we find such a place? Well, let's formulate criteria that tell us whether a place is nice for our children. So how about the younger the average age of the neighborhood, the better it is. And how about the smaller the distance to playgrounds, the better a neighborhood, i.e. neighborhood is. And you can see it coming. We will now drag and drop corresponding indicator icons into the indicator placeholders in the criteria tree. So let me first drag and drop the average age indicator and then the distance to playgrounds indicator. If you press the judge button you can indicate that for instance low average age values are better which is of course true for young families. You see that the criterion field changes from a green color to a red color. By default all indicator maps are interpreted as higher values to be better, so the default color is green. Note that this judgment turns each indicator map into a map with values ranging from 0 to 1, where 0 means that the indicator map value is not good and one means that the indicator value is perfect. In our example of age, the neighborhood with the highest average age would get a value of 0, whereas the neighborhood with the lowest average age would get a value of 1. And by rescaling each of the indicator maps to the new scale from 0, meaning bad, and 1, meaning good, we make all these indicators that originally have different units, such as numbers of years of age, um, distance in meters to playgrounds, we make them comparable or we standardize. Also note that there are many different methods to standardize data. As you can see from the pop-up menu, we have only implemented one method so far, which is called maximum standardization. Others could of course be implemented too. And here we evaluate that playgrounds should be nearby. Finally, 
we can assign priority or weights to these two criteria. In the current version of the web application, the rank order of objectives and criteria determines the weight calculated. Here too, many methods exist to assess priority and these two could be implemented. So if we want to change importance of our criteria, we have to click on these arrows. We have now formulated the smallest possible spatial multi-criteria evaluation problem and let's have a look at the results by clicking the calculate result map button. In the upper right corner you can see that the application is processing the calculation. Let's decrease the transparency and this result map shows the better neighborhoods in light orange less satisfactory neighborhoods in orange and unsatisfactory neighborhoods in red. Click on the map to see the values of average age and distance to playgrounds in the spatial information panel below. This result was calculated by multiplying each standardized indicator map with its weight and then summing these weighted standardized indicator maps. This always results in a map of index values between 0 and 1 where a value of 0 means that a location does not achieve your goal and a value of 1 means that a location fully achieves your goal. So in this case there is no neighborhood that is ideal but there are better and worse neighborhoods. Now I have added the other objectives, criteria and indicators. We want to live in a safe place, we want to live close to services, and we want to live in a wealthy place. Let's look again at the results. And if we change the order of the objectives, the results should change. So if you really want to live close to services, then we will calculate this result. And finally I'm curious to see what happens if I were to live in a wealthy neighborhood. And let's calculate the result. Well let's see where that place is. Of course the green area is the area of interest and let's zoom in and make it more transparent and let's have a look. So maybe this is our neighborhood. Finally two notes. First, different neighborhoods may of course have the same index values for different reasons. They may, for instance, share an indicator value that is equally bad, but different sets of indicator values that compensate for that poor performance. And a second remark, you can see that the list of indicators in the data pane has been reduced to contain only those uh, indicators used in the evaluation. If you want to see the whole list again, you can click on the original map layer and expand your problem definition and add new indicators to the criteria tree. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial video. We hope it was a good experience and you liked what you saw. We would like to thank European citizens who have sponsored the research and development for this open source project through the Forest Clim project on transnational forestry management strategies in response to regional climate change impacts in the Interreg 4B program of the European Regional Development Fund. We would love to hear your ideas and suggestions. If you want to implement or involve us in your projects, contact Open Spatial Decisions. If you're looking for training and research, find us at the Faculty of Geoinformation Science and Earth Observation of the University of Twente. We are publishing more videos, 
so check back at the Open Spatial Decisions website and video sites such as YouTube and Vimeo.